So when I ordered this beast from Apple, I knew that I did not want a base config. So I got it with a 16 core CPU and eight terabyte worth of SSD. However, when it comes to memory, that's really where Apple charges an extreme premium. So I decided to get this machine with only 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is uh, 29, 33 megahertz RAM with eight gigabytes on each DIMM. The servers in my lab and at work utilize identical memory to what Mac Pro actually needs. So I decided to grab a couple of sticks and uh, see what would be the best memory option for me. Uh, these are 64 gigabyte DDR4 ECC 2933 memory modules. First, we will try with 384 gigabytes of RAM and then add two more DIMMs to see how Mac performs with 512. Getting into a Mac Pro is quite easy. Simply spin the handle at the top and then when you're ready, pull the cover straight up. However, if it is on top of your desk, you may need a second hand. And voila, the back side of the motherboard, which you can't even see. To get to the memory modules on the motherboard, we have to remove these plastic covers. They're here to channel the cold air coming from front and over the memory dims for the maximum performance. Pressing on the dim ejectors on the side of each memory module will raise it just enough so that we can pull them straight out. If they seem really stubborn, you can wiggle them a tiny bit left and right in the direction of the RAM slot itself, but never up and down. To make my life simpler, I open up all of the dim ejectors, even those I won't use. Mac Pro supports up to 12 memory modules in a 6 channel config, so care should be taken into which modules we are putting the RAM in. In my case, I'm going from 4 8GB modules to 6 64GB modules. So we have to position them in exactly these slots in order for everything to work properly. DDR4 RAM has 288 pins, however they are not evenly split. The side with more pins is going to go to the right side and the one with less to the left. Usually this means a sticker or the front of the RAM up for most memory modules. As per memory diagram shown earlier, we are putting our memory in slots 1, 3, and 5 at the top and 8, 10, and 12 at the bottom. Once we are done, we will simply put the dim ejectors into their original closed position. The memory cover actually has two sides. The one with the little notch in it goes on the left, so when we put it on, we can click it into place. Since we have the Mac already opened up, let me show you the other side. I must admit, it really does have a beautiful cable-free modular design. However, there's plenty of PC motherboards that look much nicer. In my opinion, it should have had a dust filter. The buildup on top of this GPU is from only 4 days of use. The best feature though are these three fans, which are absolutely dead silent. So let's close up the case and run a few benchmarks. So we just installed 384 gigs of RAM into our machine. If you wanted 512 gigs, you would configure them as per this diagram instead. As you can expect, the first test will be Geekbench 5. Here we're going with 32 gigs of RAM to form a baseline. We're going to run the CPU benchmark, wait about 2.5-3 minutes in this sped up video and see what we get. So the best run we had with 32 gigs of RAM was 1143 for single core and 13902 for multi-core score. I ran the original test with 32 gigs of RAM four times just to establish a baseline. And the best performance we got and the best score were 1143 for single core and 13902 for multi-core. Then I ran the test two more times with 384 gigs of RAM and we got the top score of 1136 and 15379. And then two more times with half a terabyte worth of RAM and the best single core score was 1134 and multi score 14745. So what does this really tell us? Well, it seems that when going from a 32 gig four channel config to a 384 gig six channel configuration, we get about 10% improved multi score multi-core score on the Geekbench 5. However, we only get 5% improvement when going from same 32 gig 4 channel config to a 4 channel half a terabyte of RAM configuration. 
However, for most of us, this changes nothing. The 10% or 5% performance increase is only relevant if your Mac Pro is running some high intense computational tasks 24 7 365. However, for running benchmarks, this is probably why Apple chose 384 gigs of RAM as the basis of all of their tests on their website. For completeness and fun, I ran a Cinebench R20 test as well, and no matter how much RAM or if it was a 4 channel or a 6 channel memory config, most of the tests were actually very much in line with one another. And as a last test, I exported my previous YouTube video in Final Cut Pro uh, using 384 gig as well as 512, and the difference was 5 seconds. So honestly, that's within a margin of error. I would say no improvement in that case. So lessons learned here, or lessons to be learned. Number one is do not buy RAM from Apple. They would want to charge you $6,000 for 384 gigs of RAM, where on Amazon you can get it for $2,000. I did not have to purchase this just because the same memory that I use in my lab downstairs in the basement in my ESXi hosts uh, is identical server memory that Mac Pro needs. So for me, this was actually free of charge. And the whole idea of actually purchasing Mac Pro, as you may have heard in my first video, was that I wanted to replace my whole ESXi cloud infrastructure lab that runs in my basement on four servers with one machine, actually this Mac Pro right here. And I would like to run my lab in the background while I still am able to do everything and anything else on the machine itself, like Final Cut Pro, edit videos, edit my pictures, do my daily work and all of that. So that's the only reason why I actually have 384 gigs of RAM in this machine. Ultimately, I actually downgraded from 512 to 384 because that really is the sweet spot uh, for me at least. However, the question is how much memory does a normal person need on this? Like if you didn't have to run 256 gigabytes of machines in the background that are virtual machines for my lab, how much would I need then? Well, it turns out iStats menu reported me only 40 gigabytes of RAM used at any given time with everything else I had open from normal Word documents to Photoshop and editing some photos to Final Cut Pro and editing videos to browser windows open, YouTube open, Apple TV plus open playing some movies, all of that the most memory I have used was 40 gigs of RAM. So a 64 gigabyte or a 96 gigabyte config would probably be more than plenty for day-to-day -day use for anyone who's using Mac Pro for anything other than specialized tasks like virtual machines or maybe some super high-end computational tasks or machine learning if that's really what you're using this for. Uh, that's it for this quick video. Thank you for watching and have a good one.